last four parts, I have covered about the anatomical landmarks of maxillary arch and the limiting structures of the mandibular arch. In this, I will be talking about the supporting structures of the mandibular arch. The support for the lower denture is mainly provided by the buccal shelf area and the slopes of residual alveolar ridge. The total area of support from the mandible is significantly less than maxilla. The average available denture bearing area for an edentulous maxilla is 22.96 cm whereas it is 12.25 cm in the mandible. That is almost straight the double. Supporting structures are the buccal shelf area and the residual alveolar ridge. Buccal shelf area. The area between mandibular buccal frenum and the anterior edge of the masseter muscle is known as the buccal shelf area. It is bounded medially by the crest of ridge, laterally by the external oblique ridge and distally by retromolar pad. According to the syllabus of complete dentures by Charles Hardwell, the bone in this region is dense and covered by cortical bone. As the resultant forces of elevator muscles are directed to this area and the trabeculation is arranged to best resist these forces. The artificial teeth can be arranged so that the long axis can coincide with the direction of the resultant forces. So the buccal shelf area is designated as the primary stress bearing areas in the mandibular arch. According to the prosthetic treatments of edentulous patients by Zab and Bolenter, the bone of buccal shelf area is covered by a layer of cortical bone. This plus the fact that the shelf lies right angle to the vertical forces makes it the most suitable primary stress bearing area for a lower denture. However, because underlying bone is more often cancellous, the crest of the residual ridge may not be favorable as the primary stress bearing area for the lower denture. The total width of the bony foundation in this region increases as the resorption continues. Because the width of the inferior border of the mandible is greater than the width of the alveolar ridge. External oblique ridge The external oblique ridge extends at an oblique angle across the external surface of the body of the mandible. This ridge begins at the lower anterior edge of the ramus, continues on to the body and progressively thins out to the to end near the mental foramen. The external oblique ridge is most prominent in the molar area and often a distinct ledge with, the, with relation to the base of the alveolar process. This ledge is called as a buccal shelf. It provides attachment for buccinator muscle. Clinical significance. It is recorded as broad flat area extending from external oblique line to the beginning of the slope of the residual ridge. External oblique ridge appears as a slight groove. Microscopic structure. The mucous membrane covering the buccal shelf area is more loosely attached and less keratinized than the mucous membrane covering the residual alveolar ridge. It may not be as suitable histologically to provide the primary support for the denture as the mucous membrane overlying the crust of the ridge. Residual alveolar ridge The portion of the alveolar ridge and its soft tissue covering which remains following the removal of teeth. The crest of the residual alveolar ridge in the mandible may be thin, sharp, cancellous or contains large nutrient canal. Therefore, it cannot be considered as a stress bearing area. The slopes of the residual alveolar ridge can exhibit many varied degrees of support. M.M. House has classified the arch forms and in the cast when you view you can see as in the picture. Class 1 the square, class 2 tapering and class 3 ovoid. The ridge contour in mandibular residual alveolar ridge can be 
inverted u shape that is parallel walls from medium to tall with broad crest inverted u shape or short with flat crest and short inverted v tall inverted v coming to microscopic structures the mucous membrane is covered by keratinized layer and is firmly attached to the underlying periosteal bone and is similar to that of the maxillary ridge the extent of this attachment varies considerably when it is securely attached to the underlying bone and is capable of providing good tissue support for the denture adequate keratinization with dense collagenous fibers are shown in the figure clinical significance it is recorded as an alveolar groove in the impression in severely resorbed ridges there will be decreased stability of the denture and difficulty in arrangement of teeth flat ridges also have poor prognosis because the lack of vertical height affords little resistance to the horizontal movements residual alveolar ridge with compressible soft tissues develop increasing instability of the denture excessive soft tissues need surgical removal so the supporting structures on the mandibular area is been summarized over here and in the next part i'll cover about the relief areas of the mandibular denture bearing area